It's my new laptop. This is the GS73 VR Stealth Pro. It's a big name for a kind of a 17 inch nice wide laptop, but it's extremely thin. I got this one for a lot of different reasons. First off, I really like the, you know, the GTX 1060 that's gonna allow me to play a lot of games, but it's not as beefy as like the 1070 or the 1080. So it's a trade off for size. Uh, it's, you know, 17.3 inch, it's a gaming laptop and it weighs 5.35 pounds and it's 0.77 inches thin. That is really the thing. It's it's easy to easy to lug around, easy to schlep. Should have taken this to the top of the mountain. And it's also going to be um, something that doesn't have a huge footprint on my desk. I feel like some of these clunky ones, it's like, may as well just take an ITX rig around with you if you're gonna be carrying something like that around. So we've got the GTX 10 series in here and I wanna make a separate video where I benchmark this against the desktop GTX 1060 so you guys can see just how different it is because it's a, it's a full, pretty much desktop part on the inside here, but they have to change a few things about it to make it run in a laptop, you know, because the, the thermal, uh, I guess, properties of a laptop are a little bit different than a desktop. So that's pretty much what it is. But you get all the benefits of having a, you know, GTX uh, 1060 in your machine. You get all the different, you know, programs that come with NVIDIA, like Ansel and all that sort of thing. All that's in there. All the all the NVIDIA marketing stuff that you guys have seen in the other NVIDIA marketing videos. And if you haven't seen the NVIDIA marketing videos, you should go see those NVIDIA videos where I cover all the marketing stuff from all the events that we've been to from NVIDIA. But that's all in here. How about that? All right, uh, as far as the processor goes, you've got an i7 processor in here. Let me just go ahead and uh, grab you the full specs. How about that one for this one? But this one has, um, the specs are dynamic, right? So it's got, uh, you know, the latest i7-6700 uh, HQ processor, 1060 17.3 inch uh, screen. Now there's a couple different options. This one is the 120 hertz, five millisecond uh, response time screen. So this one's gonna be really nice for gaming, 120 hertz, and it's also got the G-Sync built in. Uh, so that's gonna be nice. And if you guys want like more accurate color rate production, you can get like the I IPS and you can also get a 4K panel for this, but it's only 60 hertz. 4K would have been nice for editing, but you know, really on a 17 inch screen, I don't think I want 4K on Windows. I'm just, that's just me. If I'm gonna be running 4K, I'll, I'll run it out through the, the display port right here. Of course, we have the uh, SteelSeries keyboard here. These are chiclet keys. But the main thing is that they're using, you know, the SteelSeries software, and they are decent keys that have a pretty good RGB lighting behind them. The max turbo speed on the CPU is up to 3.5 gigahertz, but it goes down to 2.6, then it'll go even lower than that if your battery's dying or whatever. It's the uh, Intel HM170 chipset. The video memory for the 1060 is six gigabytes of GDDR5. As far as the speakers go, we've got four speakers built in here, and there's even a little subwoofer, so it's got an okay sound, not, not amazing. The memory on this one is 16 gigabytes. Yeah, this one has 16 gigabytes, but, uh, you can get a couple 16 gigabyte sticks and get up to 32 in this one if you want to. Uh, it's got M.2 installed as far as you know, your OS. So it's got one of those 256 gigabytes and a one terabyte, just a spinning disk hard drive. It's good for storage, not a super fast, but for media and games, it's totally fine. Uh, I'm probably gonna swap it out pretty soon for a really, really big M.2 and a really, really big uh, SSD. Like I really wanna get one of those four terabyte SSDs and make this a monster. That'd be a cool video too, just tricking this thing out. Uh, you've got the killer uh, N1535 combo, that's uh, wireless AC, and then we also have Bluetooth 4.1, um, the, the, the network on this is the killer network um, E4200, got your card reader, and then uh, on the top here we've got a uh, webcam, 30 uh, FPS at 1080p, so 1080p webcam right up there. And then uh, we'll cover everything else in just a second as far as the ports go. The dimensions of this unit are 16. 0.21 by 11.21 by 0 0.77. And that's uh, all in inches right there. Sorry, everyone else in the world, it's not in America. Uh, but you guys can do the conversion, right? Because you're smart, because you're not in America. All right, as far as the connectivity goes, we got a lot. Let's take a look at this side here first. In the back, you've got your uh, AC power plug. And then we have a mini display port, HDMI 1.4 right there. Thunderbolt 3, oh, check that action out. I got Thunderbolt 3 right there. Got USB 3 right here. Now you go on over to the other side. And on the other side, starting in the back, we have our Kensington lock, have our uh, killer LAN, we have our SD card reader, three USB 3 ports. I love the fact that this thing has just a couple more ports than the last MSI I had, the, the, the workstation over there. So Windows is upgrading over there. Yeah. Anyway, we've got three USB 3 ports on this. Then we've got our headphone and microphone, and it's a hi-fi headphone. It sounds good. I couldn't really tell much difference or whatever. Now the memory on the inside, I mentioned it had 12 gigs, but that's a DDR4, so, you know, DDR4 on these laptops, this generation. So there you go. Now, um, as far as the gaming performance goes, I've had a sort of a, a weird experience with this laptop. I first got it, and uh, Norton immediately started 
deleting the MSI programs that some of those ones I was showing you the first time. And I was like, what the hell? So I did a system restore. Norton was behaved this time because I stopped it right when I first turned on the computer and just uninstalled Norton. Uh, there's a bit of bloatware on this. Actually, a, a decent bit of bloatware. So you guys need to go watch my video on the first steps when you get a brand new laptop because, yeah, you got to get all the bloatware off of there. Some of the MSI programs are cool, um, but I really kind of only wanted uh, the one that, that changes the, the LEDs. That's all I really wanted. I just want to change the LEDs. Don't really care about much of the rest of it. The monitoring stuff is cool. I'll use other programs. Some people uh, are going to use that. Some people are going to use other programs. But, uh, yeah, there's a fair bit of uh, bloatware installed on this, like when Zip is on here, uh, the, the, you know, Office 365 is on here, and Norton is basically a virus, in my opinion, and they put it on there. Now, I know MSI gets, you know, a couple dollars from these companies to put it on here, so it helps them uh, as far as, you know, keeping the prices somewhat low. It helps out with the prices a little bit, but really... Come on, man. Blowware, all this blowware. Another thing that's kind of weird is um, the first time, or, you know, after I got it up and running, it was running kind of strangely, like a lot of the games didn't run uh, and that sort of thing. So I just went ahead and ran the uh, Anniversary Edition up update, and since then it's been running much better, like way better. Uh, it still feels like the hard drive speed could be somewhat faster. So I think that's just what I'm transferring around on the, uh, on the mechanical hard drive. Maybe I'm just not used to a mechanical hard drive. So there's that. I think it's going to be fine uh, once I put, you know, my own SSD inside there. But for most people, this thing's going to be a gaming beast. And this 120 hertz screen, it looks, it just looks really good. I mean, it just, it looks really good. And you have a 170 degree viewing angle. And with the G-Sync in there, you know, it's, it's really hard to complain about this. So now let's take a look at the uh, Dragon Center. It's got all kinds of stuff in it, man. So SMC, let's open up some of these things here. Uh, allows you to control Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, just basically all the connected things. You can turn off the display if you want to use an external display. And one of the things that's cool about you know the, the display systems here is it's all hooked into the 1060 direct outputs, so you can get 4K uh, running at 60 hertz on your other displays and play some video games, which is cool. So that's pretty easy. Uh, Still Series Engine to control your keyboard and all your macros and all that sort of thing. Just, I guess we can open it up and take a look at it, shall we? Since we're here. It's pretty much the SteelSeries Engine uh, 3, if you are familiar with it. And it will allow you to attach other SteelSeries devices and control them all right in here. But I'm not going to really be using that much. You know, if you guys, I guess, want to, you can come in here and play around with it. Changing it up for games so that's responsive in games. Kind of cool. All right, MSI True Colors is going to let you choose several different uh, color options for your monitor. And uh, it's even got 100% RGB if you want that. All right, Nehemic Audio is uh, sort of an audio rendering engine that allows you to do things like add trouble and add bass, um, dif different audio effects you can add. One of the big things about it is it allows you to add surround sound. So if you're someone who has a regular headset but you want surround sound simulated, you can do that. I'm not a big fan of that. I like, you know, just regular audio, but if that's what you want, go for it. So you get your system monitor here, which is kind of cool, neat. LED wizard. And, uh, you know, you can change it. I'm going to do purple. Yes, just give me that thing. I'm going to use it. Just do normal. And then I'm going to come over here and just change your different colors. You can change all kinds of different colors. And you have three different zones here. Like, you can make, the, you know, one zone green, one zone blue, and one zone fuchsia. I don't care. And then we're going to change your brightness here. So, oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's a lovely shade on me. So that's what I'm going to leave it. Looks nice. System tuner. You can actually come in here and change the way your machine works change the fan speed if you want it to be uh you know a little bit louder but a little bit cooler you can do that uh you can also slow the machine down if you're not doing anything crazy you can go into economy mode especially if you're on battery that's kind of cool uh you got your usb and storage boost here um vr ready typically when it's plugged in it's going to be vr ready when it's unplugged it's not going to be vr ready you can set several different profiles and uh, then you can turn your windows key on and off when you're gaming and then here's all your different uh you know I guess your uh, color settings right there. So, got all that. And then your mobile center, you can actually get the Dragon Board app on your phone and control most of the things from your dashboard right there. So, links up to your IP address. And then you've got other tools that come with it. Uh, burn recovery, I'm just gonna use my own backup solutions, but hey, it's all in there. Battery calibration and just, you know, all the stuff that, that's all the stuff that came with the, you know, MSI's package. I'm not going to, uh, you know, talk about all the different benchmarks right now because I want to wait for the uh, the video where I compare this one to the 1060 because it'll be redundant to put them all on this. And plus, I want to benchmark this at 4K on an external monitor as well as just the 1080p. But just for reference right now, I ran uh, Doom just to see how it ran. And uh, Doom 
ran at 49.102 uh, FPS. That was the average. It did dip down to 28 at one point. It was a minor little hitch. I'm not sure what happened, but um, other than that, it, it ran pretty good playing Doom completely maxed out. So the 1060 is a decent card. And you know what? You can play The Witcher on this at 4K with an external monitor if you wanted to, but you'd have to turn off the filters. Um, on this 1080p screen, it'll run just fine with the filters, but I would still recommend turning the filters down a little bit because, you know, with a screen this size, the jaggies, in my opinion, are not that apparent, and the filters are really what kill that game. So turn down some of the post-processing and filters, and you guys can run games like The Witcher uh, without a hitch at really good frame rates. Now, if you want to play, play some crazy games, the 1060 will play. Uh, you know, a lot of the competitive games at 120 FPS or at, you know, above 100 FPS, so you can play games like Quake and that sort of thing without any problems whatsoever, and it'll be nice and silky smooth. So this can, can do a good job for that. Um, I'm going to be traveling with this thing a lot. I'll be using it for editing. It's got a lot of power, and I really like the size. Like, it does not feel much bigger than my uh, the, the old 15-inch when I've got the WS60 over there. It does not feel much bigger than that one. Like, just, just, when you pick it up and stuff, and when you put it in your backpack, but the screen looks a lot bigger to me. It just, I don't know, it's a much better experience. So that's really cool. Also, I want to thank MSI uh, for putting the function and Windows key lock into the UEFI. Thank you so much for that. I got out my little tools and I plucked off the chiclet keys and swapped those around. And so I'm much happier now having the Windows key on this side and the function key on that side. Just the way I do it. I don't know how you guys do it, but let me know. Anyway, go ahead and watch our other videos um, featuring this laptop. And stay tuned. In a couple of days, we'll have the video out where I put this one head-to-head -head against the 1060 Founders Edition. All right, so we'll see you guys in the comments. Click on over here and just do stuff. There's, like, some really awesome T-shirts this month. The shirt of the month is probably awesome. Depending on when you're watching this, I don't know. But it's probably freaking awesome. Oh, my God, they're soft. They won't be naked. And uh, then go check us out in the forum, and we'll see you there.